Hello everyone. Well, this, is, this is the first time I've ever had to use sound in a demo, so this will be fun. Um, hello. Everyone, just before I start, I thought I'd, um, everyone should give a big round of applause just to, to Michael and the PHP Asia crew, because they've done a fantastic job for the second year. So big, big round. And these events take... <laughs> Yeah, we're back. we're back. We're good. All right. And these events take a, a you know a long time to organise. So they're putting a lot of their own personal time just to make sure it's as awesome that it is. Uh, so yeah, I am uh, Stephen Cooper, also known as Developer Steve, on like all the social media as possible. I'm even on Weibo. I don't really speak Chinese that well, but you know, I'm on Weibo. It, it's a it's a cool platform. Um, I'm the senior evangelist at uh, Zero, previously from some payment companies uh, you may have heard of, and I think uh, it's great to be back in Sing Singapore and see a whole bunch of uh, familiar faces. So I, th I think a, a few of you may I, I may know a few of you, and uh, well, I definitely have seen a, a lot of familiar faces, and great to be back. Uh, as I said, I've done a few events. I think I'm, this actually needs to be updated, but I'm now nearly 10 times around the world just in distance. Uh, it doesn't feel like that, but then yeah, it has been a long way around. Um, basically, through my activities, I've been able to uh, connect to a lot of developer communities, and Singapore has an amazing developer community. I've um, been lucky enough to come through here quite a few times, having operated through Asia Pacific particularly, uh, and it is one of my favorite places to come. It's, it's, it's a great place, and the community here is truly amazing. So I now do that for this company, Xero, uh, relatively new to the Asia Pacific region and, and growing. Uh, 700,000 subscribers globally, uh, in the developer ecosystem that I connect to, there's 50,000 integrations globally, uh, 12,000, uh, sorry, 19,000 active developers throughout Asia Pacific. Um, it's, it's busy days. My inbox is never empty. We basically do uh, accounting software, so it's cloud-based accounting software, and it makes things nice and simple for uh, non-technical, and then we have a really great developer platform for technical people to be able to build whole new experiences and make uh, non-technical people's lives a whole lot easier, nice and streamlined. Um, and one of, the, one of the things I look after now is partner integration, so how developers connect to that and then build out extra functionality. The reason why I'm telling you this is a lot of the integrations that we review and a lot of the review process it uses PHP, and it's, it's something I quickly noticed, uh, even you know, in the last six months, was a majority of the integrations I was seeing come through and requesting partner status used PHP, which was great, because I love PHP. I've been using it for many, 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 many years. I am a real fan. Yes, I am. There's going to be lots of puns, just a heads up. Um, but I've been using it for quite a while. So previous to being an evangelist, I worked on a number of di digital agencies um, on some really, really big projects. Um, even some of my previous talks in the last few years, um, one of the things I, I used PHP for was in IoT, so using an Arduino Yun to basically do some automated receipt printing. Um, I think this video might be a little bit long, so we may not get through all the way, but um, basically uh, on, the, on the Yun, you have two sides to the Arduino Yun. There's the, the, like a really light web server side, and then there's the, the Arduino side uh, with a bridge in between. So you can use the server side to basically pull some data down, push it through the Arduino side, interface with some pins, and be able to uh, push, push something out through, through the interface pins. Oh good, we made it. Um, what that looked like, now I took this uh, actually through nine countries in the last few years. Uh, it's since uh, you know, Farewell uh, retired, uh, but thankfully I was never stopped with this little tiny cardboard box with a whole bunch of wires through it. Um, can make some, for some interesting times through some airport securities, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, that was, that was powered by PHP, because it did the job. It's a very, very versatile platform, as you all know. Um, another project I used it for previously, back in agency days, was I used uh, a Chromebook to uh, create an Instagram printer. So very similar function. It would pull some data down and then interact with, some, with, a, with a printer, in this case, and print out a picture with, with some branding on it. PHP is great. It's so versatile. Um, so uh, someone I've been uh, fortunate enough to be at a few conferences at was uh, Andrew Sorensen, who uh, did, did some amazing things using mathematics to generate music. And I thought, surely PHP is so great, surely it can do that. Can PHP make sound? Which is basically where this talk came from. I thought, I've used it for so many unusual things as it is, surely it can, it can, you know, it can make sound. Yeah, it can. Well, yeah, it turns out actually it can. <laughs> 
Um, now, before we get started in this next bit, I just want to say I am no musician, although I did play drums you know, many moons ago in a, in a, in a previous life. But um, yeah, I am no musician, so by any means, this is not going to be chart busting. Well, it might. I don't know. Probably not, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. But yeah, I did, did some looking around, and sure enough, PHP actually can make sound. Uh, it had uh, an integration with OpenAL, which is like an open sound library. Um, and it even has a section on php.net for all the wonderful functions you can do with this stuff. And uh, you can do channel mixing, you can do a whole bunch of different resampling, you can do buffering and all sorts of fun things. There's even a wonderful library you can set up and install. Sadly, it hasn't been updated since 2003. So um, yeah, I couldn't really do much with that. Um, regardless of what I tried, I tried you know, the automated good old brew install. And yeah, I managed to get part of the library installed, but then it just, it just wasn't happening. So I did some more digging. And um, sure enough, it, the fantastic community that's built up around PHP, I found some Git repos with people uh, over the years, and it, it was interesting, it was almost like an archaeological dig because I was going back through time seeing all these people that suddenly needed a reason to create like some, some sound or some basic wave files, so they produced like a wonderful little script that would be able to do that. Um, the first one I found was, was fairly basic, but it just said, like it proved that it could be done. Someone was interested in doing this. So I kept digging, and then I found PHP wave utils on, uh, on GitHub, and that basically has a whole bunch of really cool functions in it. Um, looking through some of the, the commit history, Rasmus actually added something to it late last year. So um, yeah, it's had some interesting people to, like add, add some more community value back to, to this project. Um, how it works, you basically just create a, a standard instance container and then add, you can do some fun things just adding different sound frequencies in at, over different periods of time. It doesn't sound anything great. Oh, I'm not going to ruin it. It basically builds a, a raw file and puts it into a container, like a wave file container, which just comes out as uh, decompressed audio. So let's give it a try. Hopefully, I've got like four demos I'm doing, which is a record, so we'll see how happy the demo gods are. Um, let's give this a go. All right, so this is basically what it sounds. I think I may have jinxed it. No, oh, there we go. We're good. All right, so this is basically what it sounds like. This is just a really basic script. Wait, let me make that a whole bunch bigger. There we go. Just a basic script that's just going to create a tone. Um, I'm cheating a little bit, so it basically outputs to a WAV file, uh, like I said. And then I'm just using uh, shell exe. By all means, I don't recommend using shell exe for very much, except for producing sound, which yeah, I'll leave it up to you whether you want to do. But yeah, just for fun, we're just going to automatically play the file just to speed things up a bit. Moment of truth. Uh, we want basic. <laughs> Wasn't that exciting? <laughs> Woo! I'm glad that actually worked. <laughs> um, so I thought, you know, we can we can build on that a little bit because that was that was pretty basic. <laughs> um, so what I did, I went through and got all the, the scale nodes in C and added them into an array, just a basic array, so I could do some basic songs. So I've got the, uh, the Darth Vader march, the, the, um, it's not the death march, but the, the Darth Vader song, everyone's going to know it. Everyone knows it as a Darth Vader song, it's fine. Uh, and it basically loops through all the letters, references the, the, the hertz that it needs to come out at, and then just loops it out, dumps it into a, a WAV file, and I'll just play it. Fingers crossed for round two. it, kind of. Um, and it's great if you want to do like hipster ringtones, which, you know, that, that works. Those of us who remember the old, old style phone, it's basically hipster ringtones. But I thought we could step this up a bit. We could take it to a whole other level, because, yeah, that was, that's pretty basic. Um, pretty retro. So we can add samples in, which is pretty cool. And like the, libra the library's got all that available, like that, that functionality built in that we can mix, start mixing samples in. Um, it does start to get a little bit complex. You have to look at like sampling rate, channels, frequency, bit rate, length. I was up till midnight last night resampling a whole bunch of stuff that we're about to do. 
Um, and you can do some fun filtering. Um, that was part of the stuff Rasmus played with was also um, sound degradation. So you can mix two wave files. You can output two wave files at different frequency and then mix them together to create some really, really funky sounds with degradation between the two wave files. We'll, um, we'll try that again. These little 8-bit things, I love these. All right, demo two. All right, so I've already got some wave file load loaded in because I didn't trust the demo gods that much. Um, and then basically we're just going to start mixing some stuff in. Trust me, this gets way better. All right, so we'll just do one loop. Now, I've got a basic loop in there so I can do some, do some fun mixing stuff on the fly. Oops, I've just, there we go. Ooh. So now we can start looping that around a little more. Actually, that sounded really good in this sound system. That started to get a bit funkier, so we can start to add some more instruments in. Industrial techno. <laughs> um, and now we can also, so one of the other things I was playing around with this morning, I don't know if anyone knows about this one, but you can get on a Mac, you can do command line um, text to speech. So you can go. Hello, PHP Singapore. So you can output that to a file, which I thought, oh, this is fun. I can start doing some, some, like, some talking in there too. So let's add that in. And we can start doing some more fun stuff. So we can. Uh, let's take that one off and put those two on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so much fun, that bit. So much better than the hipster ringtones. Um, so yeah, you can start doing some really fun things, starting to mix, mix some of this sound together. Um, the m I actually thought memory may have been an issue at some point, but it hasn't seemed to be yet. Mind you, I have got a fair bit of memory in this Mac and running in, yeah, so it may be at some point, and I don't know whether you'd want to use it sort of long term to do some DJing, but you can. Um, So then I guess the next, the next thought that occurred to me, what having you know, uh, dealt with a whole bunch of APIs before is, I wonder if we can start feeding some API noise into this. I mean, we have a PHP wrapper, which is community supported. It's you know, freely available that we, I can interact with. So I thought, I wonder what would happen if I sort of fed some of the data into, into our, from our PHP API into some of the output to hear what it sounds like. So last one. Been really lucky with the demo gods so far. All right. I know, I know. This is when the room melts. <laughs> All right. So I've got our PHP library already installed. I'm using our private authentication, so your consumer key and shared secret won't do anyone any good because you need a certificate as well. Aha. Um, but yeah, it's already already set up, and I'm basically the output from creating an invoice. I'm going to channel it straight into the output, the wave output, to see what it sounds like. So, everyone ready? You're holding on to your hats. This is the finale one. Yeah, you've actually got a hat. That is amazing. <laughs> Here we go. <coughs> Yay, cash registered noise. Oh, no one heard it? <coughs> that was like the finale joke. Everyone can laugh now, no. I should have done a laugh track, anyway. Um, yeah, I didn't actually output because it would have just sounded like garbled white noise, which I could have done as well. You can actually do white noise with the with the uh, the, the particular library. So and we're back. Anyway, that was that was kind of me. The um, I guess the final question with that is, can PHP make or the answer to the question, can PHP make sound? Yes, it is, but I'm going to leave it completely up to you whether you want to do it or not. I think some of the interesting projects, though, that I did look at and some of the sort of um, user cases, um, a lot of people with Raspberry Pis looking to make sound for d various sort of real-world experiences like doorbells or changing 
uh, sound interactions when somebody enters a, a vicinity of, of an IoT unit. Like you can use these devices to be able to interact that way. Maybe that was the original intention for the uh, OpenAL uh, integration. I'm not sure that was so many, many, many moons ago. If anyone does know, would love to chat. Um, but that is me. So thank you very much. I would let people ask questions, but I don't know if anyone would ask. Anyone got any questions with making sound? And yes, I already have asked, had a few people say why. <laughs> Make a brown. No, 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 that's a shitty thing to do. No. <laughs> um, Oh, I did have an opening joke. Oh, but oh, I should have. That would have been better than cash register. Anyway, next time. Time travel. Um, that is me. We are hiring. I already put a notice up. Anyone wants to chat, come and have a chat. Um, but that is me. Thank you very much.